Danielle Weeb, welcome to the Workplay Podcast. Thanks so much for having me. We're going to dive into all things collaboration. You are the queen of collaboration. We were just a part of one of your virtual events and it was by far, I think, the most organized, oh. easiest, best virtual event that I think I've ever been a part of. So I just feel like you know what you're doing when it comes to this. What is your business and how long have you been in business? Yeah, well, thank you so much for those kind words. I Honestly, it means so much to me. I have been in business. I've actually been an entrepreneur for over 11 years now, but the current business that I now run, which is called Business Babes Collective, has been nine years. And we started with hosting little pop-up events in my local city. I live in Vancouver, Canada, and I felt like there was a gap in the market. I felt like I was going to these events to kind of network for my own businesses that I was doing before. And I felt like there wasn't really a place for young women in business or kind of a safe place to ask questions or get feedback or learn from other people and collaborate. And so I decided I'm just going to host my own event. And so I did that. I think our first event had 10 people at it. And then it's just basically snowballed from there. We've done many pivots since then. We've added a podcast to our business. We have an online program. We have a mastermind and we still do in-person events. And then we also, as you said, do virtual events as well. So there's lots of different aspects to our business, which I really love, but our main focus is to support women to create successful collaborations, profitable collaborations in their business so that they can get in front of new audiences. Because one of the things that I realized when I was growing my business was that you can really only go so far if you're just trying to do it all on your own and get the word out about what you're doing by yourself. And so once I figured out like the power of collaborating and working together with other business owners, I'm like, Hey, I'm doubling down on this. So we've done thousands of collaborations and we just love working with people who have similar values, similar mindset when it comes to supporting women, business owners and entrepreneurs. And so that's a little bit about me. And I'm also a wife and a mom of two kids. <laughs> so the last two and a half years, we've been building our family and it's been a lot of fun. Have you always been like a connector? Because I would imagine there's people listening who are like, that's great and all for Danielle, but I am an introvert. So how is this even possible for someone like me? Yeah. Well, it's really funny. Funny enough, when I was little, my mom always tells me that I really struggled in like preschool and kindergarten. I did not want to make friends. I was so shy. I was terribly shy. And so I would hang on to the teacher and was, and it, I think it was my kindergarten report card. It's not really a report card, but you know, and it said, Danielle is finally making friends. It was like the end of the year. And I guess I had made like one friend. <laughs> And so to answer your question, no, I have not always been a social butterfly, but I think that I've always loved people and I've always been really interested in building relationships. I say this a lot too, because I think it helps to sort of frame what we're doing and how other people can implement it into their business is I, when I go to other people's events, I get nervous and I feel like a fish out of water. And so anytime you're going into a new environment or you're doing something, especially if it's for the first time, it's going to be scary. Like it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be nerve wracking. Everyone knows when you launch your business, it's terrifying, right? Like you're putting it out there. Your first like post maybe on social media or whatever that is to be like, my doors are open. I have a business it's so scary. And so I think the the thing that has made me be able to do the collaborations that we've done is that it's basically practice, right? You work with other people, you host events, you collaborate with others, you build those relationships, and it gets easier and easier over time because you're practicing it. And so I think that goes for pretty much anything in, in life or in business, it feels really hard and scary at the beginning. And then it gets easier and easier as you just start to build it into your normal routine. I think you have this empathy toward like people in the crowd that 
are they just going to sit with people they're comfortable with? Lyric and I have been to so many live events, especially last year. We were doing event after event, and you can really see the events that stick out, and yours really did for me. Just because of the way that you connected with the tables, and you gave them permission to be very silly and open up to the people that they had no idea who they were. They A lot of people came alone, and so it was a great way to connect. I think I made more connections in the probably the hour and a half that I was there than I had at the last five events. You really do practice what you preach. Is that like an intentional thing that you're like, hey, I'm going to go connect these two people? Because I think it's easy sometimes for people to be like, hey, I'm going to like, you know, do a collab. I'm going to do this or I'm going to connect with these, but they don't understand the intentionality behind it. Mm. Some people though, I have seen it be very natural for them. It's a lot as well of like trial and error of what we have seen work really well when it comes to hosting events. And one of the things I actually wanted to mention, Tracy, because you brought up like the fact that just giving permission to pe- for people to be silly. And I think one of the things that I used to be maybe nervous about when I would step on stage is I always thought that because I was, I thought I wasn't a natural person to be like, front and center on stage, I would trip up on my words or I wouldn't say the right thing, or I would be like way too nervous, whatever that might be. And I realized that if you actually lean into that and you lean into kind of just like poking fun at yourself or just making things light, it actually puts the audience at ease too. And realizing this is something that I say in all my events, everyone, you think you're the only one walking into that event and feeling nervous, everyone else is feeling the exact same way. So it just takes that like few seconds of courage to be like, Hey, my name's Danielle. What's your name? And like, have you been to one of these events before? Or where, where do you live? Like, where did you come from today or whatever? And it's just like, it, it's just breaking that ice and then creating that conversation. Um, but to answer your question on like, yeah, naturally trying to connect people. I think that's also, again, a skill that I've learned over time. Um, and again, always been someone who loves people, but learning how to facilitate an environment where people can connect and connecting other people, that's definitely something that has come over time and recognizing the best ways to do that. Um, so yeah, through our, you know, hundreds and hundreds of events, thousands of collaborations, you, you get to know like what works and what doesn't. So that's why like I've, you know, created these frameworks and these things for people that I work with so that they don't have to go through years and years of like learning. And then, so that's, yeah, hopefully that answers your question, Lyric. Yeah, yeah, no, it totally does. I, I want to dive into the actual act of collaborating with mm-hmm. another business owner because You've done it on such a a massive scale on like the virtual and in-person sense of things. But for those people out there who are like wanting a different way to market themselves, to gain an audience, I just feel like collaboration is such an amazing way to do it. But there's definitely a right and a wrong way. Could you just first and foremost define what a collaboration even is with another business owner? And then we can like start from there. Yeah, that's a great question. So collaboration is a broad topic. Basically, it's whenever you are working with another person. Let's talk about like specifically when it comes to businesses and business owners, right? So collaboration with business owners would be anytime that you are working with another entrepreneur or another business owner or another brand to bring something to life. It could be anything. It could be a podcast episode. It could be an event. It could be a piece of content. It could be like when you are working with your clients, often that's a collaboration. But how I think about collaborations when it comes to growing your business and marketing your business is is you can only reach the people within your network. And then of course, social media gives us the opportunity to reach beyond that. But at the same time, we're still limited by if someone goes viral or how many views we get on a post or a reel, right? But when it comes to collaborating with other entrepreneurs, the really cool thing is that 
you can get in front of their audience and they can get in front of yours. And so you're sharing your networks together. So you're bringing those networks together and actually cross pollinating those people that are following both brands. And so that's a way you can 2X or 3X or 10X, or in our cases, sometimes 20X and more your exposure because you're getting in front of multiple people's audiences. And so that can skyrocket your visibility and your growth in your business because you're not caught in like your own silo of just trying to do everything yourself. You can go out there and actually support someone else's business and then them support you back. I love it because it's such a beautiful, it's very... As humans, we're very relationship driven. Even if we're introverted, we need community. We need relationships. We were built for that. And so I think that when we collaborate, it actually feels really natural. It feels really good. So it's fun. Like it's a, it's a fun way to grow your business. And it also allows you as an entrepreneur to be less lonely. Like entrepreneurship is a lonely journey. And so when you can come together and do things together, there's so, so many different wins that can come from that. I am very big on self-awareness, especially in business, especially when it comes to collaboration. Who should we be shooting for in terms of collaboration? You don't know someone, like how do you approach them? And how do you know if that person is like out of reach? You know what I mean? Or if they're within your reach to collaborate, because I've seen some crazy DMs where it's like, whoa, like, I don't know anything about you. I don't know about you. And so it comes off a little scary. How do you know if someone's within the reach of collaboration for you? Okay. I get this. This is probably like the number one question that I get. So I'm so glad you're asking this. Okay. So there's both sides of things, right? There's the people that are maybe just getting started in business and maybe they feel nervous about reaching out to people for collaboration. So there's that side of things. And then there's people maybe that are a little bit further along. So I will speak to both. So if you are just getting started in in your business and you're just starting to create that brand for yourself, so to speak, and obviously workplace branding, like that's going to help you establish that brand look and that those visuals. And that's really important. The next step would be really to start to build a relationship. And so I think a lot of people kind of what you're saying, Lyric, is they want to jump straight to the collaboration. They're like, okay, I want to collaborate. I'm going to send out a hundred messages to random people asking them to collaborate. It's not going to get you the results that you, that you think it is. And so what I always teach people is like, start with building that connection, start with building that relationship first. So I'll give you an example. So let's say this is actually, this is actually a good example that I can actually share from like a perspective of what, what uh, collaboration that we've done. So we were, hosting an event and we really wanted to collaborate with the decor company to bring this event to life. This was two years ago. This was actually right after we were doing our first event post COVID. So we were looking around, we were, we were trying to figure out, okay, who are, who do we want to work with? Who do we want to collaborate with? And there was this company that had, had followed us and we started to kind of see their, their content pop up. And so we started to kind of like build that relationship. And so I decided, okay, we're connecting on Instagram, we're DMing back and forth, we're getting to know each other. And then from there, it was like, hey, I have this idea of something that I want to do in a way that I want to collaborate. I don't know if this is something that you'd be interested in, but can I send you an email with more more information and maybe we can hop on a call? So there was that like pre-work of building that connection on social media, building that relationship then it went to email, then it went to a call, then there was conversation back and forth to be like, how can we collaborate? How can we bring this to life? What is this gonna look like? How are you going to be compensated as far as like exposure and recognition and all that? And does that make sense for your business right now? So there was a lot of like back and forth con- connection and um, uh, talk before that collaboration came to life. Now. Sometimes those collaborations can come quicker. So for example, when it comes to, let's say a podcast episode, right? We had a mutual connection in Linda because we're in the same mixer mind. And so that automatically creates this like connection with us two together. And then we follow each other on Instagram and then we're talking back and forth in voice memos and we're building that connection. We're seeing if there's a fit. 
And then it's like, okay, like, let's make this happen, right? I want you to be a part of my virtual event. And then I'm going to be on your podcast. That's another like example of how, but it wasn't like I just came into your DMs out of nowhere. Also, make sure you're following the person if you're going to send them a DM and pitch them for something. (laughs) So, you know, build that connection, build that relationship, comment on their posts, like, and sometimes those relationships are going to take years to come to fruition. Sometimes it's going to happen right away. Sometimes it's going to take years and figure out like who around you is also getting, like if you're just starting your business, who else is just getting started, who you love their brand, you love what they're doing, you love what they're about, but maybe you can do a collaboration together, cross promote each other, or do like a live video on Instagram. There's so many different ways to collaborate. And I think it's just getting outside of your own, your own mind that it has to look a certain way. But I just want to like preface by saying, build that connection relationship first before you go in and try to pitch something, because you need to know that there's value on both sides. I always talk about it being like a triple win, about it being a win for you, a win for the person you're collaborating with, and then a win for the audience. So it has to have all those pieces before it's going to be a successful collaboration. I can't tell you how many like pitches that we've received where it's so one-sided yeah. and it's like, Hey, I want you to do all of this, all of this, all of this. And it's like, what are we getting in return, you know, for, for all of this? I think that is such a good point to always think about that other person, always yeah. think about their business. What does their business need before you're thinking about yourself? Yeah. When do you think is a good time to make the ask? I know that there's a lot of dancing that goes around with that, that connection. And I feel like you kind of do have to practice connecting with people before yeah. you make the ask, right? Like, how do you know when like a good time is like, let's just say it's someone a little out of your reach mm-hmm. and you have them in person. Like, do you wait, you know, another year or do you shoot your shot? Like, when do you shoot your shot? <laughs> okay. So I love this question. And I think it's, when you actually go for it is when you have something of value that you want to bring them in or have them a part of Mm -hmm. that actually is valuable for them. So if you just go in, even after you've built the connection, even after you've built the relationship, even after you've done all the work to create that relationship with them, if you send them a DM or send them an email or connect with them otherwise and say, let's collaborate, nothing's going to happen. Because it's like, then all of a sudden the ball is in their court and they're like, okay, collaborate. What does that mean? What are you asking of me? There's all of a sudden like people actually start to like back off because they're like, this person wants something from me, but I don't know what they want from me. And it's very unclear. And so when you go to collaborate is when you have something where you're like, okay, I've either I started this podcast or I'm doing something on social media, which was, is a collaboration that I want them to be a part of. Maybe it's a giveaway. Maybe it's a live video series that you're going to do. Like every week you're going to bring on someone and go live or something. And I don't know uh, if you also have like product-based business owners in your community, but like maybe you're, you have like a bundle that you want to put together. Like there's so many different ways to bring someone in on something, but it has to be valuable for them. And there has to be that, like, you know what the value is for them. And so then you're going to go in, you can send them a DM, but I wouldn't give all the information there. I would say, Hey, I have this collaboration that I'm doing, or I have this event that I'm doing, or I have this idea that I want you to be a part of. I think you'd be a really good fit. Can I send you more information over email? Mm -hmm. So then you get that email, then you actually create the pitch. That's like, here's what we're doing here's what's in it for you. Here's the value that you're going to receive from being a part of it. Maybe if it's relevant, here's the other people that are already on board and already going to be a part of it as well. Is this something you want, you want to jump into, right? So it really has to make sense that there's like a concept or an idea that you want to pursue before you go in and just like, let's collaborate. Yeah. And like, I don't know. Like, it's so broad. So like, I don't know if you've gotten those messages before, but I have. And it's like, because I talk about collaborations, right? So people will message me being like, I want to collaborate with you. I'm like, cool. I, 
what else? Like, what, what do you do? Like, what are we, what are we doing together? <laughs> so yeah, it has to be specific. <laughs> I have found that, uh, when you're in the connection phase with yeah. someone asking them what they want, like just straight mm. up, what, what, what's your goal here? Like, what's your goal for your, for what you're doing with this project? Because yeah. any piece of, oh, I could help them with that is such a good in for a collaboration. Because I think, I think so many people are savvy with collaborations at this point where it's like, you kind of know if you're going to do something for someone, there's going to be somewhat of a energy exchange of something, whether it's monetary or, you know, an exchange of services or goods, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. And sometimes just like asking like, Hey, what do you want? Even like connecting another person with another person can be an exchange as of like, Hey, I'll do this for you if you do this for me. And I just find that like, if you just ask people what they want, sometimes what they want is very simple and you can, and it's so easy for you, but hard for them to get. So I've always noticed that that's, that's kind of interesting. I've, we've gotten some partnerships, uh, through the door where it's a simple, like, oh, I really just want an intro to someone else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think too, like, it's really, um, cause in, I love that you said, just like asking, like, what are you like, and it's like, what projects are you working on right now? Or like, what's your, what, what's the main thing that you want to bring more like awareness to, or is there something that you're, that you're, that you're selling right now or launching or, or what does this look like? Because like you said, Lyric, you can come in and either provide support when it comes to exposure around that thing. And I think a lot of people listening might be thinking, well, what if I'm not at the point yet where I have that exposure to give? And so if you don't have that exposure to give, then maybe another way to support is like your skill set right? Do you have a skill set that could support them? And that's a collaboration. So we've done a lot of collaborations in our community. And because we are in a position to provide a lot of exposure for our people within our community, people come to, to us and say like, hey, I would love to provide this for you, provide this for your community, provide this for an event that you're hosting, provide this for like a service for you. And would love to collaborate in this way. Would you be willing to, you know, let's say like share your experience on your newsletter or social media or whatever that is, right? And we can come up with a collaborative idea that way. That doesn't mean if that person has five followers on Instagram, I'm not going to be like, oh no, I'm not going to work with you. It's like if they have a skill set and they've built that connection with me and that trust and I, I, I know that it's going to be a good experience working with them great. Like let's collaborate. I would love to give more exposure to what you're doing because if I believe in it, then I'm going to want to share it. So you don't have to have, I think that's a big misconception that people feel like I have to have an audience before I collaborate. And that's absolutely not true because most of the people out of the thousands of collaborations that we've done, most of the people that we've collaborated with do not have an audience and they're actually providing something of value. And then we're on our end, we are actually giving that exposure to that brand. I can't stress that enough. If someone was to come to Workplay Branding, and and I'm saying this intentionally, and you have a skill set that you think could amplify Workplay Branding, and we can exchange something, like that is almost always a hundred percent yes. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Because I, you have to think about it this way too. Like entrepreneurs, the biggest struggle that often the biggest struggle that they have. Obviously, there's the cash flow, but a bigger struggle often is time, right? And so we can only do so much with the time that we have to work on our business, to create opportunities. And so if someone comes in and says, hey, I'm going to utilize this skill set to, to save you time or to support you in this like area, that's a huge win for an entrepreneur. Even someone who has a massive following, if you can come in with a skill set and articulate that in a way that's compelling to that person. And that's where a really good pitch comes in. That's where a really good relationship like build comes in, showcasing your work, showcasing a beautiful brand, which we can get into as well, that you take your business seriously. Then the person that's receiving that pitch, when they feel that you care about their business they're going to be so much more open to collaborate with you. And I think there's this, there's um, 
Yeah, it's so funny. We actually talked about it at our virtual event. There's a lot of people are like, don't work for free. Don't like, don't discount yourself. I hate that advice. And I, and I get it. Like I get that. However, that is coming from people who probably did work for free, who probably put themselves out there, who probably discounted themselves at the beginning to get their business to where it is today. Because I don't, I, I mean, I can only speak for my own journey and the people that I've worked with and people in my community, but like my first few couple years of business, mind you, I didn't know what I knew now. I wish I did, but I don't, I didn't, but I really struggled to have consistent revenue for those first few years. And so there was a lot of things that I did for free to get my name out there, to get my business out there. And I still do things for free to get my business out there, to get my name out there, because I know that exposure and people are like, exposure doesn't pay your bills. Okay. However, it does give you that exposure and those potential relationships to those opportunities that grow your business. And so if I just decided I'm not going to ever do anything for free, I do think there's a point where you do need to charge for certain things. And I, I understand that. And there has to be boundaries because you need to protect your time and your energy. However, I also believe that there is certain times where you should actually put forth uh, either a skill set or or your time for free because you know what benefits you're going to get on the other side. And if so if that collaboration actually makes sense and it's going to bring you value and it's going to bring that other person value, then I would say go for it. So Again, it's a loaded topic. (laughs) I feel like we could have a whole episode on this because I think there's so many different circumstances that you need to kind of consider. But yeah, if you're just getting started in your business, be open to that, be open to it. And just make sure that you have like, this is your expectations of what you're going to receive on on the other side of, of maybe doing that work for free, but don't be afraid to showcase your value because you're going to start getting paid sooner if you can actually practice and showcase what you have to offer in front of new audiences. Mm, so good. I have one last question around the collaboration yeah. piece of it. For, for those of us who are like, maybe we've been connecting with people, we've gotten some collaborations under our belts. Now we're like getting more savvy with the collaborations, right? What's the etiquette for asking someone in your network for an intro to someone else that maybe you don't know, but that person does know Mm. and you're trying to expand the network so you can create more collaboration. Like what's that etiquette Mm. look like between people that you've already maybe collaborated with or have a connection with? Yeah. Oh, this is a good question. It's a little bit of a tricky question to answer because I think my answer is that it really depends on the relationship you have with that person. And I think what one of the things that you said, Lyric, which I love is like self-awareness is really important. And I really do think that as entrepreneurs, we need to be aware, self-aware, but then also aware of how we're coming across and making sure that we are coming from a place of value. Because if it feels transactional, um, then that's going to hurt the relationship rather than strengthen it. But if it feels like a natural kind of like, hey, we did this collaboration. I know you have a connection with this person. Is that something that if it can naturally kind of like come up in a conversation or naturally be something that that you can ask, then I think that is totally fine. Now, I would say that if you've already done a collaboration with them, you probably have a really good connection with them. And so I think that would be a natural, like, yes, that makes sense. But if it's just the like, oh, you're kind of like building that relation, building that connection. And then all of a sudden you come in with like, hey, can you introduce me to this person? That's going to feel a bit, probably a bit icky to them because they feel like, oh, you're coming to me to then get to my network. And so it then it maybe feels unnatural. Does that make sense? Yes. 
question to answer. I know I'm not giving like a really like specific answer, but I think if you've had a collaboration with that person and you had a good experience, for example, and they had a good experience, like it's a good experience on both sides, then I think that that's totally fine to ask that question. Mm -hmm. And how I would preface it is, hey, I am, this is my goal. This is what I'm wanting to accomplish. I would really love to connect with this person totally fine if you don't feel comfortable connecting us, but it with an introduction, like, would that be something that you would be willing to do is like an introduction email Mm -hmm. and give them the opportunity to say no, give them the opportunities to be asked, but also give them the opportunity to say no. And don't be offended if they say no, you know, like I, I give connections to people and I'm a natural connector, but Also, I want to make sure I have a good enough relationship with the person that I'm going to connect them with to make that connection or else it doesn't really make sense. So sometimes what I'll say to people if they do, because I do get asked a lot if I will connect people with other people and I, I'm totally fine with that. But sometimes what I'll say is I'll say like, Hey, you know what? Um, yeah, we did do a collaboration. I did do a collaboration with that person. I haven't spoken to them in quite some time, so I don't feel comfortable doing an introduction. But what you can do is you can email them, tell them that you're a part of our community and that you found out about them through me and that whatever it is that like relationship that we have and you can use my name in that email but I don't necessarily feel comfortable like connecting the two of you just because we haven't spoken in a long time and I don't just want to like come in their inbox, be like, hey, this person, you need to meet this person. That is such good advice. It's good advice on both fronts. Like if you're the person who someone is coming to for a connection, it's a really good, you know, just gentle way of redirecting the question. And then I think it's just a really good pitch strategy for (laughs) whoever is wanting to pitch something. Like if you have permission to name drop, I think it makes the pitch easier for someone to take more seriously. Yeah. Totally. I feel like you've just given us such a good strategy to go off of in terms of collaboration. So when our workplace members are implementing this type of strategy in their business on a quarterly basis, which I 100% think that everyone needs to be doing some level of collaboration every quarter, what are some of the things that they can think about going into their workplay visual marketing campaigns? to amplify this strategy for themselves. When I think of this, I think a lot around like PR, obviously making sure that your socials and how you're showing up online is beautiful, but what are some of the nitty gritty things that we can do visually to help amplify this particular collaboration strategy? I really love this. Okay. So one of the main things that I always tell people because one of the things that I teach is like, how do you get yourself like ready to collaborate? Like, how do you feel confident in like your brand and everything so that you can go out there and start to pitch other people? And I think visuals are a big part of that because we live in a world where social media is usually like people Google people on social media before they like Google them often. It doesn't always happen, but like often, depending on who it is, we'll Google them or we'll try to look them up on on Instagram before we'll look at their website. And so I think that having a really strong visual brand is incredibly important. And I also think that a lot of brands, and it depends on if you already are like a personal brand or not, but a lot of brands that aren't naturally like a personal brand. I know for for me, for example, I used to hide behind kind of like, I didn't want to like show my face too much on my page because it was like a community page. So I'd, I'd post pictures of like other people or I would like have these cute little stock photos that I'd have and like with like laptops. And it's like, people needed to see my face. Like I remember a bunch of people telling me like, why do you never show up on your own social media? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. (laughs) And so I think like having, but that's part of it is having content that you're really proud of, right? Because when you're excited about your content and when you're proud of your content, you're going to want to post it. And I think when you start to show up powerfully online, people take notice. And so when you're going in for those collaborations and you're pitching yourself to people, if you have a really strong brand and if you have really strong visuals, people will then see, oh, this person takes their business seriously and they have this concise visual brand that they're putting forth. And so you're automatically going to be a more attractive person 
for them to collaborate with because you have that. Another thing is one of the one of the things that we get so much in our community because we do so many collaborations when it comes to events is we will like create the collaboration. We'll be like, okay, this is what we're going to do. And this is where we're going to feature you. We're going to like do a little highlight of you on our newsletter. We're going to shout you out on social media, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, send us what you have for content for like how we can feature you. And it's like crickets. They're like, oh yeah, okay, we got to like book a session or like, oh, we don't actually like, uh, okay, are these okay? And they'll like send us photos. We're like, ah, okay, maybe we'll promote you after the event, after we can like actually get some, you know what I mean? Because we want to showcase them in the best light. We want to make sure that we can do our best to promote them in a way that we know our audience is going to react positively to. And so I think that really thinking about the collaborations that you want to do podcast guesting, whether that be hosting your own events, whether that be doing like email list swaps. I mean, the, honestly, there's so many different ways that you can collaborate for your business, pop-up events, guest speaking, that kind of thing. Having those photos and having that content that you can easily have in like a Google doc or whatever you're going to have to be like, here's a bunch of photos that you can use that is game changing. That is so game changing. And you're also, I think, like I said before, your confidence level in reaching out to these partnerships are just going to be that much more, that's that much higher because you're going to have those, those deliverables for them. Yeah. And I'm just like, as you're thinking, my creative director brain is just like going into overdrive. I'm like, oh my gosh, you could totally do one photo shoot that's just geared around media PR collaboration where you like are in brighter colors. You're in more of a studio where it's like, all right, these are my photos for standing out. Because as you're saying, like as a coordinator of a lot of these collaborations, these events, like you're wanting to promote those images. And if you think about it from like a pipeline standpoint, if you're promoting those graphics images and your audience is seeing that, you want your audience to be captivated by that. Having a whole shoot geared around that so that it's over and done with. And it's like, you can go on to your next project in your next quarter, but then you know it's done. It's like, all right, this quarterly shoot is all for media stuff and you have an intention behind it. I just, I couldn't imagine how much more collaboration you would seek out, how much more you would put yourself out there and then how much more would come to you. Cause sometimes like even just having a photo of you in a bright pantsuit, you know, get posted on a graphic where it's like, Oh yeah, I want to, I want to hear this person speak. Like there's so much perception there that you're yeah. um, working either for or against you when it comes yeah. to this type of content. So I love the idea of just doing one quarterly shoot in your workplace year, like once a year, all geared yeah. towards media collaboration. Yeah, um, I love that. And I also, as you were talking, I was like, oh yeah, that, and then it, it gave me this idea too, where, because every single business that you collaborate with might have a different um, way that they are going to showcase you. And they might also have a different, different brand or maybe different brand colors or whatever that looks like. So like my mind is also going to like, you know, obviously I love that you, you do quarterly shoots. So it's kind of like, okay, maybe one shoot is like what you were saying, like bright colors, bright, this, all that, all that stuff. And then maybe another shoot, you have some photos that are maybe a little bit more muted colors so that if there's a brand that you're collaborating with, that maybe is more like that is more what their brand is. They're probably going to choose those photos to showcase on their platforms because it matches their own brand. So it's funny because we like, we always look for photos and, and, and content for the people we collaborate with that also somewhat matches our brand. So it's not like totally clashing, you know, our brand colors and that kind of thing. And so that's also something to maybe consider for your photo shoots is or even just have like one of your outfits that's a little bit more like black and white or muted colors. And then you have like the bright, like I love the like, you know, bright, bold colors too. So that was something that came to my mind is, is think about all of the different brands that you might be wanting to collaborate with and how can you have different content 
for them so that, and, and that's why like when you have, I love when people have, when I'm like, oh, can you, can you share some photos or whatever? And I love when they have a, um, like a folder and they have like so many options for me. I'm like, oh, thank goodness. I can choose the one that works best for what we're doing and I can use that one. So uh, like you said, it's just having those options is going to make you have more opportunities. It's also going to just make you more confident to reach out to those opportunities as well. Mom, did you have something? Oh, I was going to talk about the fact that we can have 14 different outfit changes in that (laughs) studio, but you already made the point. But it's like 14 different outfit changes, 14 different looks. You can do casual, you can do very button up, you know, tights, uh, professional look. Like there's so many different ways, but I was also going to piggyback on the fact that you're like, I love the variety too. Some people want to throw those into Canva and have, you know, wording off to the left or the right, or, you know, just, there's so many different angles you can get Mm -hmm. as well, but it makes a good point for a press, um, kit. Like if you're, if that's the project that you want to do on one of these shoots, it's so easy to do. It's so easy when you have like, you know, a lot of options, uh, at your fingertips for clothing changes, for prop changes, things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, no, no. You can go. You can go. Oh, I was just going to say, I think that's so brilliant when it comes to also like the different outfits, because like you said, there might be some collaborations that you're going to do where it makes more sense for like a casual kind of like more of a casual look. Um, and I always, I always um, think like, especially like when, whenever we do content or photo shoots, sometimes I'm like, why did I not bring more outfits? Like you always think you're bringing so much to a shoot, but then you're like, why didn't I bring more? Like I should have brought more options. Why didn't I bring those pants? My favorite pants, I didn't bring them. So it's like, like showing up prepared, right? To have those different options, I think is so great because you're right. There's different scenarios where like, oh, it makes more sense to have casual, a casual look. And then it makes, there's some scenarios where it makes more sense to have like a dressed up, like bold look. So yeah. So and I also feel like the, whoever you are collaborating with is recognizing how professional you are showing up on the back end, And mm-hmm. that just allows you to see that in their mind. So if you are wanting to take that relationship a step further, if you are wanting to do other things with them, they already have this like first impression that's like, wow, they have it together. You know what I mean? And I think that also speaks volumes as well. And, you know, having even throwing in like, hey, I know your brand is XYZ. So I threw in more of my pinks and my and my reds. I just feel like that type of customization when you are, you know, getting invited to something or, you know, you've pitched something to someone like people remember stuff like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And me, and as someone, again, who collaborates with a lot of different businesses, it makes a huge difference because when we have really good content that we can share, we're proud to share it. We're excited to share it. We're going to go above and beyond. Um, and it's, I'll be honest, it's, it is really challenging to promote a business properly and promote someone that we're collaborating with properly. If we don't have content, like how are we supposed to promote? Like we, we've, gotten super creative with how we promote these businesses, but it's challenging, right? Because we want to make sure we are showcasing them in the best light. So if you can do the pre-work of, of having that so that it's easy for brands to promote you in a, in a really good light, then that's so good. Um, another thing that I wanted to like mention is having a media page or a media kit. Um, so I suggest just like having a, even just like a page on your website that's just like specifically for collaborations or for, for media or for anything like that, where you can have your photos there, you can have your bio, you can have like content for people to pull from. Maybe you even want to have like some, I know you, you do um, like video content as well with, with the method, which is so cool. So like, maybe you have some, like, I don't know, like, um, what do you call it? B-roll? I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. BTS. I was like, um, <laughs> B-roll content like on there because someone might want to showcase you with video instead of, instead of photos. Right. So like having that content there for them, I think is so 
again, like you said, it's just going to elevate that experience for, for everybody across the board. So good. So good. Danielle, you've given us so much. I've learned so much from this episode. This is so great. I think it's just a testament to when you do create visual visuals very specifically, you can amplify whatever strategy that you're doing. And I think collaboration is one of those those things that kind of floats around people. It's a little intangible. And then like, I think you just made it so tangible for our members to implement this while, you know, amplifying that visual strategy. So thank you so much. I know that you have a whole process framework around this. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? Cause I know that you have a special gift for our workplace members and I just want to make sure they have all that information if they want help implementing this type of strategy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. I love talking about this stuff. As you can tell, I'm very passionate about it. Um, But yeah, you can grab, I actually have a free workshop that we did. And basically what it's talking about is how we specifically, because I know that it's easier to really figure out like what have other people done? Like case studies are really powerful. And so how we've implemented um, collaborations into our own businesses. And then we actually interview three of our clients, people within our community that have implemented collaborations in their own business and how it's been able to support them. And then I also give like a ton of ideas of different ways you can collaborate for your business and then like how to actually get started. So there's like some tangible things that like, if you watch that workshop, you'll come out of that workshop being like, okay, I know my like next three steps of like what I could implement today to like make, make things happen and to create some momentum with this. So people can get access to that at businessbabescollective.com slash collaborate. Perfect. And we'll put that in the show notes as well. And where can everyone find you online and connect? Yeah, you can find me. I have a podcast, Business Babes Collective. So you can find that wherever you listen to podcasts. And then you can find me online. I'm my personal Instagram is Danny Living Life, Danny with an I Living Life. So if you want all the motherhood behind the scenes running a business type type content, you can go there. And then our business page is Business Babes Co. So Business Babes Co is our Instagram, where we talk about all of our events and collaborations and all that good stuff. Oh, you guys go connect with Danielle. This is so amazing. Thank you so much for being on. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you.